Bryn. Good morning. Good morning. If you're in New York and good afternoon here in London. And uh, it's the Mohawk 4X scalping team again, another live stream. And today, obviously, the news is all about the um, CPI core inflation rate for the US, which is what Bloomberg and everyone's been talking about, uh, with an expected rate of 7%, which can be seen as bullish for the dollar. And so we're going to trade gold, I'm going to trade US 30, and obviously as it's pre-market open, we're going to look at taking some reverse scalping and then go the way of the news for the NY open. That's the same system and strategy as we always use. Uh, it's coming up in about 10 minutes time, 15 minutes time. That's what everyone's talking about. From New York City for our audience worldwide on TV and radio. Alongside We're just listening Tom in. And Lisa Abramovitz, I'm Jonathan Farrow, counting you down to inflation data in America, about 12 minutes away. In your equity market, uh, right, I'm early. Good morning from Mississippi. On the Nasdaq 100. Mississippi, we, we love it. Up a third of one percent. Yields unchanged. My favorite place. So I'm just passing through. As Alicia Levine of BMY Mellon said about ten minutes ago. On the way to Florida. Oh, sunny, sunny, sunny Florida. By more than twenty basis points. I hope it's sunny. Twenty-two basis points at the moment, Tom. US thirty is already, already climbing up. Look, anticipating this. That's that's where the TP is going to be. Look, because it's retested. One, two, tried there. Tried if it breaks this. This is our. This is our goal. James Diamond over the last two days at JP Morgan. These people are betting on growth. Looking for a better economy, Tom. Gold's pushing up. Because we're up against eight thirty, I want to get this housekeeping out of the way. We do and I expect word alone. I want to be very quickly on this. Anne Marie she's like gifted, John. I don't know what Anne Marie's doing. I expect gold to continue up if the news is good. It's spurs. It's spurs because they play Chelsea and to get up Got a resistance zone north of 1821, and then we're open quite a bit between 1822 and 1830. A couple of spots we may catch. Ooh, gold spiking hard. We're being costed in. Yep. Yeah, look at that. It's caught between a zone there. It's caught between 1820 and 1818. Look. So it's going to be the internal yeah. data. So a lot, you know, if we get anywhere between six and a half and seven and a half percent, I agree that like the, the market's probably not going to react uh, that crazy. But but some of the internal data is really important, particularly uh, what I'm going to be focusing on is the services component. So you basically have four big components of CPI. Yeah. Services being the one that tends to be the most sticky. So that's the one where if we're going to see four four and a half in, uh, percent inflation over the next couple of years. That's the sector that has to see growth in order for that to occur. Last month it fell a little bit in uh, in November compared to December, uh, November, uh, October. But uh, you know, in December, if it, if it comes, they hit again, the fastest rate in forty years. That we will have. So yeah, look at that. It's it's, it's, it's pricing it in. It's trying to messy is could end up. Ira? Given the fact that we're still dealing with Omicron, we're still dealing with certain Could restrictions. Could end up breaking. This is not necessarily a clean read on a recovery in the services sector. Well, un unfortunately, that's the world we live in these days, right, Lisa? That's W on gold. We don't know exactly. If the RSI goes up. We don't know how Omicron is necessarily going to affect lockdowns. And so no one knows the true result. We're all just second guessing at the moment. They're expecting, like I say, year on year. To go from six point to seven, and the month on month is going to be five point four. So both the same direction, whichever way you cut it. And obviously, we know the higher the figure, the better it is for the dollar. Um, there's a dollar stronger, but obviously goods go up. So um, we can trade the reverse on this quite nicely. If the news is bad, obviously I'm going to sell gold, and vice versa. Um, again, this is for entertainment purposes only. This is just for me, for my pleasure, for fun. For me and Justin, it's not financial advice, but this is just showing you how we true scalp the news and get involved in it that most other people leave alone and don't know how to trade. By the end of the year, under four yeah. percent, and this is what Ira, we're doing. When you start to look at the specific components, there is a question about what the Fed can do. To making sure, yeah, please don't, how much please don't follow me for financial advice. I spent <laughs> bit money on Jameson. Yeah, don't follow me. Mine get, <laughs> get spent on, mine get spent on Marks and Spencer's food, <laughs> cheese.
Just Marks and Spencer's and Jit. I think it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> you got it, bro. All right, we broke. Poor services price. Poor zone. I broke that uh, really resistance on gold in the good sector, right? So, so if they raise yeah. interest rates, cracking a ball, neutral resistance, other than now neutral support. To, yeah, so beautiful. Good, yeah, nice. So, so that will crimp demand, right? The, so the, the so if we get a, a push to 72, on the demand side of the economy, not as this could spike. I mean, it doesn't, it, like they say, and you say it might not move the market, it will do. It's a really a tough situation for them because they should maybe under 4%. Hmm. Demand because of these supply side issues. And will, will the supply side issues work themselves out? If, so if it's under 4%, then so we're, we're taking, for, for the taking sales under 4%. We don't see a demand Let's see. driven. Right. Um, uh, Demand-driven inflation in many sectors. Ira, Steve Major has been dead on at HSBC about lower for longer on rates. He reaffirms that today, particularly in the two years. All space. in the news here: inflation, inflation, inflation. Out. Do you have a framework of market rose straight for a second straight day after Powell chose not to drop any new bombshells? Reference price, uh, uh, interest rate hikes. Um, analysis: the headline rate of seven percent. Well, the core is expected to jump from to from five before we do think that by 2024 we could have jump to five from 4.9 november real yield so not very positive maybe a couple of basis points but Let's see but we think that dynamics as well the curve could be positive by the end of the cycle uh, cpi the is not the inflation measure that the fed attaches most importance to significant increases in inflation expectations however 40 year high still a 40 year high which avoids cut tips are trading there's a lot of people so, yeah. still piling money into uh, into inflation related product like ETF stocks mixed yeah COVID devs oil pushes higher as we said um, you know we're just saying earlier you know we took our first kind of loss on API news yesterday I went it back this morning but API news was bad and then did, didn't drop so sometimes that happens like I say nothing's 100% but we'll uh, trade the EIA news release um, later on uh, you've seen a significant go the same way really i mean the thing is with oil it's so bullish at the moment that the news has got to be severely bad to take a drop but it did drop in our chart here here is the drop this was last night here's where the news came out we love round numbers that <laughs> I mean, we were at 6.8 percent last month, and and uh, yeah, there was a drop. Look, you see, change to get to seven, but it will be a political issue for the Fed chair, who has to live up to his promise that he made yesterday that they can. All gone, lit up on the overbought zone, 76 on the RSI. Joe Biden. Just didn't get out of that trade look yesterday. See, look, there was the news release. Look, every month, and in right on that candle there. 27 prices were going down for things like it came down retested range went up it stopped loss came back down again look it was a break-even trade really and then it tp here look that was the tp headline because that's the headline that's going to be in the paper that's going to get into people's minds but ira jersey was right we're gonna look at the subcomponents and see what's gaining what's losing if anything and uh get some idea of where we're going and from here what's amazing john is 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 he'll be yep. just as strong on retail friday he will be. We'll be teasing that and promo and get straight after CPI Wednesday. <laughs> Tom, the sticker shock of that seven handle, as Mike points out, if we get it, that's the front page. The difference is only 20 basis points from the previous month. I say only because the difference is much bigger than that. It is so loading up on gold, loading up on gold. Yep, here we go. So gold's at 1820 at the moment. Got that potential to go 1822. Two. Yep. On the news. Breaking down the story for us, Mike McKee, when the number drops in five minutes' time, responding to that, Michael Gapen of Barclays, who thinks this Federal Reserve is ready to go. He's looking for a hike in March. Future's positive a third. Yep. And four minutes to release. Three minutes. Yep, about three minutes to go, because remember the new that uh, Bloomberg's a little bit behind because of the stream. Um We'll watch it here on uh, my FX book, of course, and see what we can get. Let's, let's hope the results are both the same way, at least the month and the yearly. Should be. You got the core, you got the month on month, and you got the year on year look, inflation rate, core, year on year, so both. So, 
to the inflation month I'm on is expected to be lower, look. That's meant to be the same, and then the year on year is meant to be higher. But like they just said, the high impact is the, the big headline one is the year on year. The creep of up to 7%. And then the monthly figure, and then, you know, these ones here. So this is the, the core is the price index. This is the overall. So let's see, we've got a minute to go. Let's have a look what US 30 is doing. It's already peaked out. Look at that. So I'm going to move the TP to potentially the top of that spike again because if the news is good, bad, I'm going to look for I'm going to look for a buy. I'm going to go to the reservoirs. Remember, and gold. I'm going to go the way off the news. So if it's good, I'm going to buy, sell, buy. I'm going to sell, and then we can catch the reverse. Uh, right. Look, we'll get ready. I'm going to count down in a minute, but a minute to go. Good luck, good luck, everybody. Let's see what we can get. Like I say, US 30 will be slow to react anyway, as it's shut. You know, it's not open, not trading, it's pre market. So, um, let's see what we get. Some, see some green or see some red. Gold's just pulling up. back. Yeah, gold's pulling back. Ranging, it's all waiting. It's all waiting. Hit it. Twenty seconds to go. Will it be as expected or not? Headline news. Headline news. Ooh. Gold dropped off hard. Yeah, 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 it's all good, it's all good. Look at that, it's all good. 7% as expected. So, um, let's see. Let it fly. Let it fly. Yeah. Well, should watch it fly. Watch it fly, pigeons. And what does that mean? It's ranging all over the place. It's great. Caught some already. Gone for the sell on US 30. Going again. Your economic data seconds away from New York City. Gold ranging around. It's wicked. Lisa Bravid, some Jonathan Ferro. Equity futures into this one up two tenths of one percent on the SP, up a third on the Nasdaq. Yields on a 10 year unchanged at 173 on Euro. Trying to get in and out of my broker as quick as I can. With the data, here is Mike McKee. Winner today, economists who predicted a 7% year-over-year CPI. That's exactly what we got as uh, the headline yep. CPI rises half a Wait for gold to drop, catch the buy. I'm going to buy gold at the bottom. Go, 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 go. Which pushes that up to 5.5%. That's a tick higher than we yeah, look at that. anticipated. And Amazing. I want to uh, stress a number that we haven't stressed in uh, previous years or even months. Cool, cool, cool. I'm just going to get out of gold now. I'm about $120 up. Come on, go a bit more. Bureau of Labor Statistics takes the uh, average hourly earnings numbers we get from the two more buys. Report, Those load of trades on US 30. Uh, really uh, I think I might have taken a small loss. On two, just because of the so broker ranging around. Uh, behind inflation at this point, and that's going to be the political issue. The gold looks going to bounce off that neutral. Let's have a look at US 30. Might get us the compositional story. Here you go. Look, it's going to buy. It's buy, buy, buy time. Futures up two tenths on the S P on the Nasdaq two up about a third on the bond market story yield tied by half a basis. It's better than expected overall. A couple of basis points, but basically where we were earlier this morning at ninety. Tom, when you go through this data and to Mike McKee's point, this market has been primed for this number for quite a while. This morning, this feels like a bigger political. One's going to bounce off that. Let me get another. 
strongly agree with that. What you look, you look at, John, is the so-called integrand, the space that resistance at the top of our breakout zone. Look at look at that US thirty. Look at that. Perfect. Smash the TP. Oh, another two hundred dollars just bagged on gold. Going to get out of this one. Yeah, that's going to be a. Wow, gold's smashing around. If the Fed is right and inflation. A couple of small losses due to my broken up clearing me out, but uh, waiting for this move on US thirty. Food and energy and and gold. Slightly good news, John and Tom and Lisa, is that food prices on the month rose half a percent that's lower than it was in november and uh october and uh, september so uh, a little bit of a back off it's still oh, it's gone red come on come years. on people are going to notice that six and a half see that push up in terms of food at home gasoline prices are down or uh, by half a percent gold's december, going up now oh just pushing rising again we'll see what happens with that in the month of uh january push gold, look at that. gasoline prices on the year up 49.9 percent that will get people's attention michael mckee say. how much are we seeing that services <laughs> sector inflation rebound that a lot of people have been many trades have we done i've done one two three so four five seven, six right. seven eight That's nine ten out. trades and i got up three tenths of eight one percent. three losses four tenths in the and then the rest wins in the month so far uh, uh, november and so it's down a little bit three points and again that's all year, down to uh the uh, my broker seven percent and services up three point seven percent one thing a lot of people don't consider whenever trading your fill rate and your execution on these brokers tend to lag especially around news events because everybody's trading them yeah i mean i only lost 17 24 about 35 dollars compared to winning a couple of hundred there so and i'm still waiting for more I'm waiting for gold now to push on up it's it's going to bounce off our trend line figure out how to do for that's the way the government beautiful rejection back up in 1820 yeah 59 buying a home as you only do it once us 30 is looking to dip so it's not no us is going to go up changes month to month well i'm going to raise this tp now to the come up with a new resistance zone there you go we have seen rents been going up they've been repricing everybody got a deal during the pandemic in 2020 and now uh, those mm, calls dropping back off <laughs> yeah yeah it's dropped back again that imputed rent right to try to get the household number out of it and so we know home prices are going up but mm -hmm. going up slowly michael mckee thank you so much. push on up us 30s gonna see if it's breaking this gonna break this 36 breaking out to new a higher level here getting up to an 84 uh, 40 as well and john i see the vix coming in i'm sorry john after what we saw on monday a vix is 17 Point nine four is a big deal. Not much price action in the bond market, Tom. Tens unchanged at one seventy four thirties up a single basis point to almost two point one percent. Two is just south of ninety now, up a single basis point off the back of this. But this is the political story here, Tom. It's been some forty years. You've the thing is, it was all green, pretty much unexpected. So obviously, like I could say, I've gone the reverse. Let's go. Let's go. Over on the FOMC, Michael Gapin joins us now, the chief U.S. economist at Barclays. And Mike, you've pointed out, let's go in March. My question would be, what would stop him? between now and then yes and hold back really up got it got it got it yeah i got in did i get it yes yep. i got 20 30 and another 23 so i got another 670 another hundred dollars on those three i got in on gold and i got on the sell on you at a buy on us 30 as well so that was another three in the labor market they're basically true scalping bro true scalping with the unemployment rate sure another month of solid employment. yeah look at that hit broke the tp and there it is there's the gold this is what i was waiting for all this spike below was just the manipulation because i said gold would go the way of the news you just have to hold tight and buy at the bottom here and now gold's pushing on up inflation news was good we're pre-market so we go the reverse gold goes up and us 30 hasn't dropped yet that's the only one but i we we know gold is the most reliable one but us 30 now is going to hit heavy resistance it's at 85 86. on the street is this the same inflation as 1982 no um so uh, us 30 we can look to take some sales at the top here i'm just gonna gold's still playing around 
multi-decade yeah. period of demand exceeding supply, creating wages, I love it. spirals, higher inflation expectations. It was very much a demand-driven story. Trying to Although get in the game, my broker just messing me around. To it with, with the oil market at the time. This is, is a very different outcome. It's not I like it when it messes around. Consistently easy yeah, gold is really doing well with this. Mm -hmm. policy, obviously, we have some of that. In the response, to very the world, volatile. We think it's still primarily a pandemic. It was thirty story. pushing up. That is likely to ease over time. And as you mentioned in the last sixty-two RSI, said, go on, get back up to that sixty-three, sixty-four. This risk management positioning is about preventing right. second round effects, right? Preventing those the impulse today from showing up. Binging around. Longer run inflation expectation. It's thirty so I think it's a very break. Inflation, so how the get this is. just trying to get a couple of cheeky and cells in off. So it just pulls back just a little bit. Survive. What does President Biden do with seven percent inflation? Twenty thirty dollars will do. Uh, in, in part, talk about that. You you get it. You see it. You get it. You understand the problem. It, it crimps real incomes. Households are very sensitive to changes in in energy prices and in food prices. Uh, you and then you also want eighty six eighty five to, to help solve it. You know, I'm sorry. Sure that your Federal Reserve Chairman that you're appointing understands the issue and the importance of getting inflation lower uh, they unlock some of the strategic systems given us is it's a heavy resistance you've still got 10 seconds on this candle the next candle could be the rejection candle on us 30 that's what i'm looking at here and stabilize the situation it could be the next bullish one in which case we're going for a buy back up understand it and we're taking corrective measures how do you get the right <laughs> bless me <laughs> That they want Thank you, sir. We've been hearing from John this morning. The and I'm out. I'm out. I'm out of the cell on US 30. What did I get? 25 and 8. So I got another 35, 34 pounds. So it was about $50. Before I saw it boost up. I just got the little wick down, sell on that. That was good. My cheeky cells. Well, certainly, I think conditions in the labor market are because now obviously it's going to be bullish so i don't want to be stuck in a cell yet i'll sell when the rsi comes out of this zone watching price action on here uh, let's have a look at you uh, gold back to gold now look let's see if it's going to break and we're going to take cells or we're going to have another buy comes down on on the other side but in the moment of course what it means is it bites and it crimps real real purchasing power so Disposable income was kind of all the story last year about government. There's still a little bit of scalping left to be done here, look, because gold's bounced up again. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm a lord. Quick, get out. Get out of the trade. Yes. $300. <laughs> oh, 105 and 101 in pounds. So 206 pounds on the buy on gold. Perfect. Go look, go look at DAX. I just cleared a four hundred and twenty-one dollar trade on DAX that I had holding from earlier. What the hell? The inflation pushed DAX up, bro. Never know. Yeah, I'm gonna send it to the group. You gotta see this. We're all trying to work on the work out the month on month reduction mark. Brilliant. We smashed on gold. We knew it would bounce. Right. So have a quick look at DAX. Yes, we'll look, man. Sure. I think if you if most of us oh yes one else gonna start in the second half of the year we're in yeah to, yeah amazing say later this year. it shows you how they're correlated mature maturity schedule yeah. of the fed's balance sheet roughly over the year after the year. i'll mark that off let's let's call it about inflation treasuries running off and prepay estimates on, on mbs portfolios will give you somewhere around another 300 billion even on DAX. Could have at least half of that, billion, maybe up yeah, to nice. That's a nice win on DAX there, bro. Yeah. $400. Wicked. So let's call it love it. you got to love it. And, and say, look, it's, uh, get ready for the sell on US 30 here. Look at gold. Oh, <laughs> bro, look at the spike. Look at that. I should have held. I should have held. What were 1824? Oh. I know. Look at that 1824. Yeah. Uh, effect on, on front end financing conditions. So I, yeah. I think they may try to get it. Yeah, I think that's going to open us back up to that 1830, 1832 area. Sure. Yeah. But I kind of want to give it about 45 minutes and see what we're going to do on the open. We may pull back hard off of this. So maybe an opportunity to sell at the top. Yeah. I'm just in on the sell on US 30 again. And the remainder of, of the coupon issuance or, 
I was literally on my closeout profit screen for gold and then i whenever i closed it i saw that spike up and then it hit resistance i went back to my screen i was like whoa whoa, whoa. i just had a, a dax trade and drawdown and i went to my profit screen saw that I like, thank goodness i've been holding that for about an hour and a half look at gold pushing man look at gold i'm in the zone come on he's gonna push yep. up it's got another two sales on us 30 another 35 dollars now hit the highest level in four Honestly, I can chill for the rest of the day because that closed. That's my profit target. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still gonna trade the open now that I've got all my positions cleared and margin open up though. But there were rapid increases in food, cars, and clothes. Meanwhile, the CEO of the Let's see if it pushes up. That was a great spike. Beautiful. All of those candles. Money to be made both ways and all of them. Inflation arrives. It's difficult to stop. It needs to be dealt with in a robust fashion, and I don't think there's political will around the world to do that. You could have hedged for one. Let's see, the 8:30 candle. You could have hedged one, two, three, four. Could have hedged four candles. Yeah, I just got two more buys. I got 13 and 25 pounds. So another $50 there. I just got in and out uh, just as it hit that heavy resistance on gold. So. Nice little 10% for the day. Well, that's it, yeah. I'll, I've done, yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it, bro. Done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 trades from that news with just three losses. So, uh, whew, that's some mega scalping, bro. We love it. Yeah. I got four for the day. It's been a slow morning, but I got four for the day. I got that oil loss from last night and everything else completely smashed and covered that. News. Done. That's it. Done. As so we'll get ready for the that's 15 minutes of scalping. <laughs> Seems like we've been doing it for ages. We have. It's been a couple of years. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm going to see if we're going to get this blip at 2 p.m. See, gold lock, pull back. I just got out of that buy. See, I knew it was going to hit that heavy resistance. It's the good thing about scalping the news in conjunction with our Axe trading system here, you see. We've got the levels to tell us where to get in and out. You can preset them if you want, but like me, I just see it hit that level and I get out of the trade. You see our blue zone kicked in here on that buy on gold at 18.25. That told me to get out, so I took my $50 and got out. But we'd already won a couple of hundred on this as well. And Justin obviously just won 400 on DAX as well. So look at that. US 30 as well. Look, now backing off. Look, sell time on US 30. It's dipping. Look. About his new book and how green hydrogen could be competitive within five years. Costs are coming down and people are waking up to the fact that it's the only way to decarbonize certain sectors. What goes up must come down on a news event like that. World headquarters in New York. And don't miss this week's edition of Bloomberg Green. Let's just see if that dips down a little bit. RSI breaking. Well, that will do for a 15-minute scalping session. Over the past few weeks, it's made it clear it wants to go higher. It got a little spooky. Love it. Yeah. And we'll see if we get this little bump in 10 minutes, for half an hour before the open. And we'll do it all again on the open. This is Bloomberg Wall Street Week. I'm David Weston. We've got the information. Yes, we will. David, you just hit the nail right on the head. From businesses most influential and instrumental. And that's the way you run good risk management. But we need to invest in our systems. Of course, you know me. Popped in a cheeky sell. <laughs> all weekend on Bloomberg Television and Radio.
I'm not gonna push my luck. I need 103.50 to clear. Alright, we'll take it at 58. Yeah. Done! 51. 51 dollars. Nice. I just got out on the sale on US 30. I just got another 25 dollars on US 30 on the sale as well. Again, another cheeky off that. I was gonna try and ride it back to uh, 1820, but we got wicks on both sides of this candle signaling indecision on gold. So I'll take my profits and let it do what it's gonna do. Let it calm down and then we'll get back in on the open. Yeah, I'm gonna add up. I don't even know how much I want on that actually. I'm just gonna add it all up now. So that was the total. Got 21 positions. Oof. So the first one was the loss at 11, 1172. But um, well, I can add it all up now and see what we did in 15, 20 minutes of trading. With the music plays on, BSO season sponsor, Bank of America. six. The big issue is inflation, which I don't think is transitory. I think. Yeah, see, so we're pushing uh, back off. To be yep, I ended that one just in time. Pushing back up to 1823. Nice one. Um, one way you know this inflation is really going to stick is the wage inflation. All right, I'm gonna sit on my hands for the open. That's what I'm doing now. I'm just adding up. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to give the house their money back. It's so easy to, because you can get carried away. But that that's enough. Mm -hmm. That's that's one thing that a lot of people don't put emphasis on. Whatever they start trading, discipline. Yes, and it's easier when you've got somebody else with you as well to help. Oh, absolutely. And this is the youngest kid of a single mom in Chicago. That's that's why I like the concept of the team that you've built. Like we we're here to help each other. That's it. I think more than anyone I know. I explain I explain trading to people and I was like, you need a team underneath you to bounce ideas off of, you know, what if this, what if that? Well, you might want to watch out for this. It's the beauty of having a support staff underneath you. Yeah. Not bad. There you go, I did all up to twenty one trades, twenty one trades with three losses and we bagged seven hundred and seventy three dollars. There you go. Beautiful. In twenty minutes of trading. Well, I got five trades from last night to this morning. Most of it was done uh, within this session. Five fifty eleven. Four wins, one loss. Five hundred and fifty dollars and eleven pennies. Well, it's George Lucas or whatever. Prince said dot 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 dot. It's about a character set from her childhood. What did you discuss with her about the best practices she learned in joining eviction in Chicago? Well, among other things, she learned how to work hard and study and be very loyal. Uh, she joined Ariel right out of college, and she's been there ever since. She's the only person in her class at Princeton oh, who has wait. the same telephone number uh, they had uh, upon graduation. <laughs> yep, Dax on a hard pullback now. Caught those just in time. Jobs. David, how is that view from her perspective growing up from a uh, much less beneficial or less uh, wealthy Back down below neutral resistance. where she is now? Color her view on how companies should operate themselves on how they should pay their employees. Well, she believes that uh, companies need to do a much better job of getting minorities on their board and also minorities in their executive suites. And that's yeah, look at US 30 pulling back now, see? Oh, Jim. Yep. With JP Morgan, have been making a major effort and gold ranging minority owned firm stuck, but she hasn't forgotten her past. Although she can, uh, like, say, we'll look to take sales on gold on the open, so it should drop back down to 1820. Maybe our neutral resistance, neutral support zone is what I'm looking at here. And then did the interview, could be about there, 1826 for the open person, but she hasn't forgotten her past. Many people who come from poor circumstances sometimes they forget their past but she does not she's very close to her family and she's also very close to giving back to so i'm going to mark out uh parts of chicago where she's based 
uh, in terms of making certain that people there have better chance and why open as, as a young person on that. it's a fascinating time to speak with her especially as we do seem to be at a pivot point in the economy with a changed landscape for inflation we just got that inflation read and real wages still ne negative deeply so uh, some of the most negative reads and real wages year over year going back decades what's her view yeah, on no, how no positions open on such so great now. so uh, well, her firm has been a what's called a value investment firm, which is to say they look at companies that are not the high tech, high flyers, but ones that clearly are going to do well when the economy is uh, in reasonable shape. Effect. And so well. That's what they've been doing for some 20 plus years that she's been there. And her view is you just can't just chase the high flyers. But she does think their values out and there. And US 30, like I say, we're going to look for a pullback here. And then we're going to look for boost up again on the open. Maybe back to retest. Maybe a double top. She actually does a lot of hard work. And she's very, very knowledgeable about what she's talking about. Kind of topic. But you know how, it is, how hard it is to tie your shoe and drive? I remember as clear as hell in the early 1980s when John Rogers launched his strange experiment. They have to deal Challenge. with a new financial world. And Mr. Rubenstein, we have to have you comment on new and fresh investment to Citadel uh, Securities. Not the hedge fund, but the order flow Robin Hood right. part of it. Please discuss Sequoia Paradigm and how they have chosen to invest in Citadel. Well, Sequoia is uh, perhaps the leading venture firm in the United States in recent years. They've done extremely well. Uh, they have made a, with a, another uh, firm, a $1.5 billion investment into uh, the Citadel Securities. We've got six minutes then. Let's see if this uh, uh, a very, very it does anything. Ken Griffin. Ken Griffin has run uh, Citadel's uh, uh, 2 p.m. candle. About a 43 billion dollar hedge fund, but a separate business which is extremely up on US 30. Citadel Securities, which trades uh, and clears security trading all over the world now. Yeah, it's amazing how you finesse this. I'm going to stop the show, folks. David Rubenstein here is dropping the punt, the lead line here. Fred Ersham came out of Duke University and did Paradigm. What is it like that Duke University could generate a guy like Fred who did Coinbase, did this, did this, and now takes part in Citadel? Well, I'm sure the uh, development people at uh, Duke will be in touch with him very shortly. <laughs> Um, but obviously, we're proud to have people like that uh, come from Duke University. Um, Ken Griffin is a graduate of Harvard. He came from modest circumstances, did very well at Harvard, and yeah. been trading ever since. And he's become one of the most successful people in the financial service world, for, for sure. D David, thrilled to have you join us in studio today. David Rubenstein, of course, of Carlisle, and an important interview. Melody Hobson, who's lived it, board member, I should mention, for Bloomberg Philanthropies uh, as well. Lisa, the markets move. I'm going to say it's a constructive treatment on what we see off this inflation report. Yeah, people already had a sense of what to expect, and it seems like the market is taking in stride some of these figures. However, looking under the hood, I am really struck by this inflation report. It is not a food and energy-driven <coughs> one. The core CPI yeah. rising more than expected, with shelter costs rising 0.4% from the prior month after several reads of 0.5%. Basically, rent costs are going up dramatically. Also, autos, uh, a huge driver of the increase that yeah, we I saw that. in inflation. They are still going up as some of those supply chain disruptions continue to crimp supplies yep. and demand continues to remain hot. And on the data, we see it with the yield coming in at 1.72% on the 10 year yield. Everything was good. Move, we'll take it. NASDAQ, 0.5. Uh, NASDAQ, they're a very good number here, back to almost a 16,000 level as you know, well. Lisa, Tom, yeah, please. I got to say, at what point do we move beyond it's all baked in? Right. Silver did so phenomenal on the news. Among many people. Nice and is smooth. It all baked in or <laughs> no, do we see something no, uh, that is potentially uh, causing the volatility? Oversold from 8 a.m. Eastern time all the way through the news. It stayed constant. A couple little spikes. It is not all baked in. And after you've been wrong seven times in a row like I have in the markets, you learn that it's yeah. not all baked in. The smartest thing That's I right. heard today, I, I, I can't remember. My brain's frozen. Always custard in. Rafa, I remember Rafa, but I don't remember who said we need two, three, four months of inflation data to get a real trend here. Yeah, the problem is a lot of people saying that the Fed is behind the curve. When you start to see rents increase as much as they have, <clears throat> that's a lagging indicator. It is lagging uh, behind home prices uh, and will continue to increase. How much yeah. do wages try to catch up with the pace of inflation as people start to say, hey, I'm basically getting a pay cut yeah. if you don't pay me a lot more. I would link lagging indicator directly into the Morgan Stanley compensation lift that Leanne Garens was talking about.
earlier. It is an eventful day. You must stay with us. We continue to look at the pandemic and pharmaceuticals, a theme for Bloomberg this week. Christoph Weber joins uh, from Takeda. Please stay with us on radio, on television. This We're staying with you, ready for the open. We've got four minutes to the blip. Let's see if we get the two, the 9 a.m. New York blip. Let's see if we can scalp on US 30 if there's anything. Let's see. Get in on a buy, possibly. Could be a little little pre-market buy at two, three minutes time. I bet that data was bang on, it was good. Three minutes to go. There's 30 ranging, look. Stick with it. Two minutes to go. One space agency that travels under the radar is ESA. Which is surprising considering what the European Space Agency has achieved and how vital it is to the global space industry. We've collaborated with pretty much everybody who is involved in space exploration. ESA wants to be a leading force in furthering humanity's mission into space. Commander Ground, do you copy? Copy. If we want to have successful human missions to Mars, we are going to have to learn to live and work off-world in a different way. And the place where we are going to learn to do that is on the moon. Can ESA help humanity take its next giant leap? Here's the, here we go, look. We're gonna get this little buy blip. One minute to go. When I was about 61, I traveled handbags, and I remember how it made me feel. And I think fashion is fascinating for the mood changing, the confidence boosting aspects. So this is a tribal aspect. One minute to go. What fashion does. Watch that candle, look. Right now, about half of US households invest. We'd like to get that number up to 95 plus percent. Investing should be as ubiquitous as shopping online. It should just be something that people do. How fragile is the European energy complex? The European energy complex has been incredibly fragile for a number of months. spike up on US 30. It seems to just yeah. keep getting hit with, with new crises. So I was just watching up. Hard to put your head around any narrative. Let's just be honest. We've had sort of a shift in. Are we in some sort of stagflation fears moment? People were talking about that all day yesterday. It is a number we haven't seen for 40 years. It's a number this market's been primed for for several months. Your equity market futures up 24, advancing a half of 1% on the SP. The countdown to the open starts right now. We're going to be with you, Jonathan. We're going to be with you. For the start of U.S. trading. Thank you. This is Bloomberg, the open with Jonathan Farrow. That's this little move for a double top. Gold on its way. Again, our trend line's beautiful, been a beautiful support, hasn't it? The trend line. Perfect. If it breaks here and breaks below, then obviously it's a sell. The CPI, CPI numbers. This first quarter data won't look fantastic. the needle here. They want to appease financial markets, convince market players that they're going to control inflation. On the other hand, you've got 
the public that's upset about inflation. Political problem number one for the Biden administration. The Fed is going to have to walk this very delicate balance. It has a seven handle. Joining us now to discuss is Emily Rowland of John Hancock, JP Morgan's Jack Caffrey and Morgan Stanley's Vichy to the Pator. Let's begin with you, Emily, your reaction to the number from 30 minutes ago. I do think that there was a fear that inflation was going to come in hotter than expected for the month of December, and it essentially met expectations. So you're not seeing a, a huge reaction from the markets. This is just about the. <laughs> I love that. that if she, she, she was trading on a three minute time frame. And she's like, the, no reaction. Okay, what's that? No reaction. Oh, yeah, that's no reaction. I love it. I know what they mean. It just makes me laugh that, you know. There is a reaction. It's just, you know, the bigger picture to them. It's probably not, but to us, it is, you know. that are expecting higher inflation readings to really continue throughout the year, will those expectations be met? And our view is that you will see elevated inflation readings for the next few months. Remember, this time last year, inflation was at 1.4%. I'm not looking at the bigger picture. Yeah, we say it was at 1%. Now, this, you know. So we think base effects are going to really... US 30, gold, oh, gold, yeah, gold again, look, yeah, rejected off the trend line, perfect. ...as those base yeah. effects go from basically being your best friend to your worst enemy. As it relates to the Fed, I, I don't think that there was enough in today's report to stop them from pursuing this more hawkish path that they've laid out. Vishy, this bond market's done a lot of heavy lifting year to date already. We're not even two full weeks into 22. Tenure yields this morning down two basis points to 171. Vishy, your response, please. I think I, I broadly agree with what Emily just said. Uh, I think this uh, we, we expectation that uh, in the first few months of the year, we will see level of inflation go higher. It is, in, in, it is uh, in line with that expectation. We do expect that over the course of the year, as the year goes along, we will see some of these inflationary pressures begin to come down uh, and we'll end the year at a much lower level. Yeah. And I think from my takeaway from here, from this is it does reinforce uh, the message that we have been getting from the from the Fed, uh, including yesterday's testimony. It was 30 uh, just ranging a little bit. Uh, like I say, I expect this to take a nice uh, that they, they seem to be more buys it, uh, um, front and center. on the open. Let's see if it hangs around this zone here would be nice. Certainly this has been Move that back to that zone now. Look, I probably hope for that. Is what I'm... Quite some time. Uh, and certainly base math is going to be a challenge. And I obviously gold's, gold's already spiked down to, I told you it would hit the neutral support look, and it did. Of this year. And then bounced and off it. Can we create a situation where you can get that number where it might run a bit hot against the Fed's longer term goal of 2%, but you know, how long do we live with a two and a half, three, three and a quarter percent inflation rate when we start- 13, and see if we get a little push up on this before the open. Um, and I think that becomes the question- With crypto as well. Start also pushing and saying, you know, I effectively am getting anti-stimulus at this point in time. Whether it's everything is red, or can I get wage gains? And, and how does the corporate sector then respond to a potentially more challenging labor market? Uh, which is certainly when the Fed pivoted as part of their pivot yesterday, talking about we may be at full foolish employment, even if we're not at that academic definition. And we've got there pretty quickly. It's a number we haven't seen since 1982. Mike McKee, it's mm. been a while. It's been a while, 1982, and let's take a look at the chart here. It shows you just how long it has been and how high we've gone above the Fed's target. That's the red band there, the two and a half to one and a half percent. They got to do something about that. By the way, John, 1982, this number, uh, when it came out, was just after the Tottenham Hotspurs won the FA Cup. Uh, so, Tom, <laughs> another $29 off of that. Let's take a look at some of the breakdown of numbers. Uh, and Excellent. Problem for Powell and I'm watching Nas as well. I did well with that yesterday, just seeing if that's going to break. You see here, look, we've got a, a key level here, heavy resistance at 16, 16 oh, 16066. This could be if it, if it breaks again on the open. Expect that to go up if US 30. Rent starting to rise up dips. Or so it's coming down at the moment, so let's see, you've got to wait for it to break. It'd be a nice sell, then a buy on this on the open, sell, and then bounce up. If there is good news from the Fed and for the Fed, is that economists think that this is very close to the peak. We are going to start seeing 
the inflation rate come down in 2022. We'll watch very closely the next couple of months, but if that follows, then they can say maybe they're getting the job done. And then finally, the other issue, though, is that when you get high inflation, it eats away at what you earn. And if you're earning more money, as we have been lately, uh, you're not getting uh, inflation's benefit out of it. You can see there below zero, we're down uh, by about 2.3% uh, in terms of you're below what you would have uh, been making. Uh, even with a raise. Mike McKee, thank you, sir. On top of the big story. 30 is going to bounce off the trend line. Look. Politically, we'll touch base with Amory Hordern down in Washington, D.C. in just a moment. For Chairman Powell, he faced down Capitol Hill in the last 24 hours, and he's looking to thread the needle. Yeah. We're really just going to be moving over the course of this year to a policy that is closer to normal, but it's a long road to normal from where we are. It really should not have negative effects on the employment market. Vishy, let's pick up on what Chairman Powell just said. How difficult will it be to thread that needle? I think there is a, uh, a, a wide range of outcomes. So I, you know, I, clearly it is a um, pretty challenging uh, <coughs> job. But I think yeah, it's bounced off it. Look, Fed will be focused on is using RSI 55. Let's see if it goes back. Tool, as in Might be to get a buy in again on this if it uh, goes above our average. We Wait, the see of the, the usage of both of these tools. We already saw yesterday um, uh, in the, the chair indicating that at the current size, the balance sheet is to get back up to that heavy resistance zone. So we do expect that with a unlike what we 400 saw points cycle, possible um, where there was a substantial and on gold and to see if it's going to break retest our neutral support zone. And for NAS, we'll look to see if it's going to break above sell before buying breaking and going up to the heavy resistance it's on a nice bull run there there's a slight couple of slight corrections big look at that big w it was great second leg that double bottom bang it went it's basically ranged steady increase retest the times and it's broke finally neutral support the key level 1591 RSI size is coming down though look at the moment on now so so we we think that the point where we expect to see more pressure is probably in the five to ten uh five to ten year part of the curve and i think we should also keep in mind here the balance sheet and the normalization for treasuries and yeah, that so securities it'll dip down quite differently because the uh the from the 30 is pushing quantitative tightening uh that's what we will see is not uh just a quantitative easing with a negative sign. it's ranging actually, along our trend line for mortgages it's actually a little bit more than that because yeah. unlike in unlike treasuries uh mortgages are being bought in About 20 minutes to go in the secondary market and and therefore uh the fed was also not only buying mortgages, another 20 bucks on dax uh, you're loving it. You're keeping with the DAX, yeah? So as a yeah. The fastest good. With the Fed. That's a good thing. When you find one thing that works and, you, and you're hooked into it, you just keep scalping it. That's the best way to be. I keep telling people we need to keep chopping and changing around. QT is not equal to minus one, you know, put a negative sign on QT. Got it. Got it. On the Treasury side of things, we heard from Bob Michael of JP Morgan Asset Management. He had to say this, and Emily, I want to come to you on this. Without the central bank purchases and with cash now offering some yield, let's see how willing investors are to continue to purchase long duration government debt at significant negative real yields. Emily, does that resonate with you? Yeah, it does. I mean, I think the, the bottom line here is that the cycle is moving incredibly fast. And what and, and you talked about the risk that the Fed is taking right now. What they're risking is tightening into a slowing growth environment. And that's pretty unusual. We've been able to have really long cycles because inflation has been incredibly low over the last couple of cycles. And, and that's changing this time. 
we talked before about the year over year comps as far as inflation goes. It's like we're getting ready for that second leg M on DAX. As far as fiscal stimulus and monetary policy stimulus goes, we had $5 trillion in fiscal stimulus this time last year in the spring. Yeah. We're not going to get that again. So we see the economic backdrop slowing. If the, the US 30 is going to bump up. We actually think that the cycle is aging very quickly because of that. Um, I hate talking about that aging. I was actually around in 1982, which makes me pretty sad. Ranging on this line. That's the way we're thinking about these market cycles, and it has key implications for cross assets. What we expect. Under the hood. Your 20 minutes, 15 minutes to go. 15, 60 minutes to go. We actually see the 10-year Treasury here chopping around in a, a sort of a sideways environment, somewhere between one and two percent in 2022. We don't see that back up in the 10-year Treasury that many are expecting because of that decelerating growth environment and because of the fact that we're quickly moving towards late cycle here. Jeff Gunlack picked up on a similar theme. Double Line's Jeff Gunlack saying the following: the Fed seems pretty far behind the curve when you consider wage growth. We're going to be more on recession watch than we have been. Jack, this is the market mm. we're in right now. It's incredibly divided, very polarizing views on either end of the spectrum. Jack, your response to what Jeff's thinking about, what Emily just mentioned, that slowdown, the possibility we hike into one. Well, well certainly we should be getting a slowdown. And you know, RSI 57, 56. Perspective, this has been the most robust nominal GDP environment they've operated in, in for most of their careers. Uh, and so I think that's just a very interesting dynamic for them to think about cost pressures they really haven't had to deal with. They have wage pressures from their employees they haven't had to deal with, uh, but they also have some pricing power uh, depending on the individual supply demand characteristics. You know, when I look at it, uh, I look at a fixed income market or if I look at the, the move index, it seems like the bond, mar bond market traders aren't really sure which way to go. And when I look at- We this, get 10 pips gap, on US 30. The equity implied yeah, volatility. Mm -hmm. It really feels like where we're going to have issues in the markets, it's more likely to come out of whether investors are willing to take that negative, negative re real returns in the fixed income market and how that translates back into the equity market, into the credit markets and the funding markets. So yeah, a nice sell on US 30 before it go buy again. So we can go either way. And if Emily is right, so it's all about this idea of three to four gold three now together. breaking. Well down now, here we go, look, RSI on red, come out of the 44 zone, 45. Already hit what I set as my TP for the open, you see, so now we can adjust that, that's fine. Are we going to bounce off a neutral support or are we going to break? Yeah. I think break. Because it's been green for so long. We had one, two, three, four, five potential buys on US on the gold which we took. And we're going to retest here. Look. Now it's coming again. It's pushing back up. It's gone back neutral. Look. It could limit revenue. About 30 like, seconds on this candle. On pace for its worst day since March of 29, 2019. That says something given that it's even worse than the selling in March of 2020. Abby, thank you. Thank you very much. Coming up on this program, more on that inflation print, grappling with the politics of rising prices. But when inflation arrives, it's difficult to stop. It needs to be dealt with in a robust fashion. And I don't think there's political will around the world to do that. More on that conversation still ahead from New York. This is Bloomberg. I think it's respect in that neutral zone. Yeah. Yep. It's not breaking out of it yet. the latest yeah now's look overbought so we can look for a pullback there on the open that is for sure 141 so I'm going to look at a sell on NAS especially looking at the uh, schools in particular and children charts as you can see hospitalizations actually on the rise it's neutral support of our, our flat baseline here look. schools open is the right move it's done well school is a you know, re uh, relatively safe environment for kids. Um, masking, 
uh, tests, especially during this. You see there, there's our baseline look, bang. That's the target. And uh, I think you want to trade NAS. An and then obviously, I assume there'll be a buy afterwards. That's what I'm looking for. In just a week. Are we reaching the peak of this wave, considering how quickly it is spreading through the population? I think at a certain point, it really uh, has to slow down. And it's probably within a couple weeks or a few weeks away. Um, and that's, I think, going to be good news. The question is, can we keep hospitalizations down enough during this period so we're not swamping hospitals? US 30 is now sat on some yeah support there we go it's got a nice big juicy support zone so again you know, look to take buy and again this is the overall tp but on the open we just want to take get try and get 10 pips really again you're talking 200 just to that bit there and here's the a flat ag line so all right south curling back up on gold Earning seasons is coming. Where are investors seeing the weaknesses? It means profits down the line. Earning season on Bloomberg Television and Radio. In terms of where the Fed is on their on their dual mandate, inflation and the labor market, they're basically there. At the January meeting at the end of this month, they could very well declare we're we're at full employment. I don't really think anything stops them from Going full employment. One of these kind of outlier events. So we've been waiting for it. We got it. A seven handle on inflation in America. You've got to go back to 1982 for the last time we saw that number. The White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki was waiting US for it. US 30 look. Break Kings into that zone. It's getting into the zone. Neutral for breaks out of the neutral zone. Generally expect the year over year measure to down to more historically typical levels by the end of the year. For more, let's bring in Bloomberg's Amory Hortel. Which is good for the open. The lower it falls, the more I want it to go. And you just adjust the TP. It's probably going to be around here now. It is, Jonathan. It may be priced into the markets, but already my inbox is really blowing up from the right who are saying what is going on in terms of inflation and questioning the president's policies in regard to what is going on, given what we are seeing in the consumer prices, highest in 39 years. Jonathan, the talking points you're likely going to hear from the White House today are really twofold. One, which we talked about earlier, is the fact that we had a pretty good unemployment report. If you look at the unemployment rate, 3.9 percent. Thinking. Just a smidge off from where we were pre-pandemic. They will likely tout that as something. Ten minutes to go. Let's see what happens. Everything's breaking our trend lines now. Blame, if you will. They are going to talk about the fact that we are seeing higher gasoline prices because of what is going on in the oil market and the likes of OPEC Plus, Saudi Arabia. US 30 is going to be on some serious support, though, so I won't be looking to take a sell. Corporate greed is really a slogan we've heard over the past few months, and they've taken aim recently when you look at your grocery bill and higher meat prices. They've taken aim at meat processors. So that's likely going to be the talking points, Jonathan. But while the thing off the sports zone to catch a wick in his arsenal to really combat inflation, there's a great Washington Post article this week that talked about the one tool he has, and that is shaping the Federal Reserve. So if he wanted to immediately address inflation, he can put some inflation gold stuck in that 1820 zone. zone. Open seats, but Jonathan, we still have yet to hear his picks, and we were told we were going to get them before the end of last year. AMH, we got to wait. We got to wait a little bit longer. Anne Marie down in Washington D.C. Thank you. I caught up with the administration coming into this print, spoke to a source. They want to focus on the labor market story. They think that development, that positive development is a little stickier and these numbers won't be so much. On the labor market, we've got other issues. Take a look at this quote from Scott Kirby of United Airlines. This for me, quote of the week. In one day alone at Newark, nearly one third of our workforce called out sick. We've got mounting yeah. shortages across this country, cancellations wow. for the airlines as well. I want to get to Emily Rowland, Jack Caffrey, Vichy Tripator. Jack Caffrey, work out this labor market for me. What a difficult time. Well, I, I think there's a short-term issue in the labor market and there's an intermediate-term issue and then a longer-term issue. The short-term issue is people... Old ranging again, not stuck in that neutral zone look at how where we need it to be. Omicron has spread Bouncing off our neutral support, but I expect a nice spike down and a spike up. On the open, and same with US 30. Expect that boost up. 
It's curling back up now. They're both sat perfectly how I want them to be sat. We've got no positions open. We're just waiting about seven, eight minutes before we enter any trades, and then we'll see price action. have to get confident that they can get all the support around them they need to consistently be back in the office. I got a couple of fishing lines out there. Having the schools open being pretty, pretty big and pretty important. The longer term issues, I think, come down to do we have the labor force that we want for the economy that we want? And that's an issue of training. That's an issue of, of convincing people that you know, certain jobs which have been looked down upon for, for years um, are actually, you know, really solid paths to the middle class uh, and necessary if you want to have the sort of infrastructure spending cycle uh, that Washington has certainly appropriated money for, you know, do you have the workforce to have a housing cycle and infrastructure spending simultaneously? That to me remains a pretty big question. In the short term, we're looking through some of these issues, some of them that you mentioned. Emily, looking at the airlines year to day, we're up 7% on United, on Delta up 5.5, on American up 6, JetBlue doing okay. Despite these worker shortages, there's a hope we work through this. I hope we work through this and that inflation print from this morning comes back down. Are you looking through some of this too? We are. It's like the reopening trade 5.0. You know, how many times can we have this this reopening trade? And the start to the year does feel like this sort of risk on bonanza, almost similar to what we saw in the beginning yeah. of last year. And, you know, we still do want to embrace risk assets here. We're maintaining our calls into 2021. We're overweight equities. A lines all up. Areas like yeah. U.S. mid and large caps as offense in the portfolio. We want the value factor. We want to pair that with quality. And then we're embracing corporate credit within fixed income. So we think you won the economic back. And neutral zone. Um, but and neutral zone. About reaching too far for risk here as we head into the back. I'll push him back up. Make a spike up. Hit this and spike down. Here in our TP, right that's what we're hoping for. Looking at the Five minutes to go till we enter anything. No positions. We evaluate where we are in the cycle. We see that coming down later in the year. So we'll start to look at more defensive parts of the market. Uh, but for right now, we want to really have some offense. Uh, we just would not go too far. You know, it's been like life in the fast lane uh, over the past year. And we would be really thoughtful about really adding on a lot to risk assets and to cyclicality at this stage. Never mind the past year, the past two weeks, 2022, feels like a lifetime already. Vishy, <laughs> I need to get your view on corporate credit. Emily saying she's embracing corporate credit, so sit tight. I want to come to you on that in just a couple of minutes' time. We we'll embrace it. Alongside Jack Caffrey and Emily Rowland, coming up the morning calls and later, stocks breaking their longest losing streak since September. That conversation just around the corner from New York. This is Bloomberg. Open, it's just around the corner. It is. Asian stock, look at that, Hang Sang, well overbought. Hong Kong 50 is up for selling. Flat DAX now, but see, yeah, same. Nothing there. I'm Nicholas, and I'm a developer at Morales. Like I say, Naz in the over bought zone so we'll look and see if this can get a little pullback it's 10 pips 100 points on the open and the top of that candle at the moment is yeah look at that and you've got to go to this light hasn't even got to go that far just here even human waste is in demand as farmers hunt for alternatives and then we'll catch this if it breaks above see how much right, here is just a 16066 Let's see if we can catch a little bit this little dip friable mix that can be mixed into your just your soil in the ground and and for growing a whole range of different vegetables holds the nutrients in holds the water in there's 30 pushing back up slowly the kind of biodynamic profile of the soil the recent price spike could mean more farmers going organic for the long term from New York City, in London, in Sydney, in San Francisco, 9 a.m. in Beijing and Shanghai. Good morning, everyone. Have a great evening. To recap the headlines, you do not want to miss this How story. How are you thinking about those dynamics? 
five minutes to the open. Yep. It's like gold stand bullish. Yep. I'm still going to go for a sell, see if we get a dip down on the open and then a buy on US 30 and we're going for sales on NAS. That's my feelings. If we get it wrong, get it wrong. But that's what I'm looking at and that's why I'm going with the axe and that's why I'm going to trade. Let's see. Done a lot of work, not just in the equity market, but also the bond market. Switch at the board and get to tens at more than 20 basis points on the year so far. Coming out of that inflation number in line with expectations, yields lower by a couple of basis points on tens to one. Watch gold for the open. The front tens got interesting over the last couple of weeks too. Just short of 90 basis points through that level briefly. Thank you, Jonathan. Earlier. That's across asset price action. Here are your morning calls. We begin first up with Raymond James. Cutting its price target on PayPal to two. PayPal dropping. Maintaining an outperform rate. Time to short your PayPal shares. In the first half of the year. William Blair upgrading Shopify to outperform from market perform, calling the company's valuation more reasonable amid strong growth. And finally, Wedbush cutting its price target on buy. $61 on a gold buy. Oh, nice. Well done. Well done. I've just sat on my hands. Pop, pop, pop out the neutral zone. More on that conversation still ahead from New York City. This is Bloomberg. We're getting ready, we're getting ready. Yeah, US 30 pushing, pushing up. I like to see. Hit that T, gonna hit that TP lot. Set it a bit higher, let's be a bit more optimistic. We can, uh, here look, would be nice. We can get a 148, 300. Okay, 30 seconds to go. Let's see what we can do. There are flowers. This is a big deal for Spicejet because it is the only Indian operator. You can get anything on the gold. Anything on US 30 and anything on NAS. Good luck, everybody. This is for pure entertainment. don't any longer believe in the American dream. What do you say to these people about whether this country... Already in profit on NAS, already in profit on gold. See, going to hold, hold, hold. Here we go, 30 seconds, it's in. Let's see what we're going to get. It fly, fly pigeons, fly. I think what we've seen during this period of time is that communicating via video is not a US 30 hit TP, that's done. Excellent stuff. There you go, yeah, spiked, hit that, perfect, open on that. And just waiting on, see what we get on gold. All dipping down. Yeah, caught a bit on NAS as well. The market's been waiting several months for it. Equity futures up four tenths of one percent on the S&P. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Just Nasdaq waiting on gold. As I said, sell on NAS 100 and buy on US 30. 
In the FX market, the Euro on gold. Move that to 100. Let's see if gold's going to come back and retest that level. Yep, green on gold. Lean back. Real. Done. Done, done, done. We took one small loss because my broker didn't can cancel me out on it, but everything else was a win 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 as i said we took two sales on gold and bagged ourselves sixty dollars we took uh two sales on us uh, on nas and we lost ten dollars and won 35 and i took two buys on us 30 and we won a hundred dollars there is your new york open done Another one in the books. This year, which is the first uh, upturn in the U.S. rate cycle for six years. Yeah. I suspect that's where perhaps it was uh, eighty, hundred and five, hundred and fifty, hundred and four, hundred and forty pounds. So uh, that's another couple of hundred bagged. Perfect. Yeah, and even on the price action here, it looks like gold was a buy that it dipped down enough to forget the sell because I took it at that I took it at the points of interest there. That's where I took the sell. US thirty. There's the buy. Look at that. Perfect. As we said, won't get better than that. Uh, I think it just gets a little harder into into next year. We look at earnings growth for the S and P. Just as we said on all that good news, you are steadily continuing upwards, and there was a spike down on Nas. Look at that it spiked. I told you. What did I say? Nas would be a spike down and then up. So you, I could have gone in for the buy as well. But I took the sell, and there it was. Look, hit that profit. And that's all we're bothered about. We're trading. Price action, we're trading the new spikes that most people avoid. Yeah, we've got that $8, $9 loss on that, but it was just because it was spiking around too much. And now you see, I'm looking for the buy. So if it breaks here, look, RSI 71, 75, then we're going up to. Just wait, wait, wait. Nine tenths of one percent a lift this morning. Vichy hey, look, Nas was 1.45, so I took the sales, dropped back down to 9.6. Now it's pushing back up. When it gets over one percent, I'm always looking to trade the reverse. US 30 now, look, doing what I said it would do again, could be a re entry. It's up some heavy, going to be some resistance here. Just zoom out and see. Gold now pushing down, look again. Not breaking that average line, it's going to break that line. A heavy resistance zone at 18.23. NAS looks like it's pushing up. So fundamentals are fine, and you know, by any metric, liquidity buffers, debt service ratios, all of those are going to push. The sensitivity is more to this withdrawal of liquidity in the market, and that hits the investment grade market uh, more than it hits the. So, the MRI resistance got a blue zone, you see, which is when you usually get out and the opportunity when you see that blue zone appear. Investment grade, and within high yield, we think there is better opportunity in leverage loans versus high yield bonds. It's rejecting so off it, look. The way I would think about ordering, sequencing of this is um, leverage loans. 69 RSI. Over investment grade. And the right yeah, there's your sell you see again. Do I mean? Does that bring you? Well, I would clarify what I had said in that when I look to fix See if it pushes back up again. I would look I don't think we have a credit cycle that we have to worry about in terms of distress. I just do want to keep seeing credit investors still. Well, that's nearly we're nearly a thousand dollars up for the day. Credit offerings that we've seen over so that's brilliant. Over the past year and year six hundred and fifty over here. Excellent. In credit will be that's the target and issue and it, that's you know, um you know, but coming back to this that's a 20 percent increase on my account and possibly decelerating inflation mm, i think so investors are going to feel probably between 12 and 15 without knowing the calculation start focusing a little less on deeply cyclical ideas we talked about the airlines a few minutes ago 
and start thinking more about those businesses that are, have quality, um, have some ability to control their pricing, uh, perhaps because of the off, what they offer uniquely rather than necessarily relying on short-term supply demand dynamics. And I think that will become what investors can own for the Nice look, dropping, the dropping, 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 dropping perfectly. Emphasizing quality. I said, the other question I hear a lot dropping off that high, look. I to get there and I'm being a bit unfair here because yep. I'm going to quote your, your colleague. Didn't break our resistance zone, you see. Perfect. Our AX system just tells you don't do anything. Told you take the buy once this is broken. Get in on the sell. I clear that sell, but gold's going back up. I'm buying 1824 as a take profit. We have different portfolio managers, Jack. So you're allowed to take a different view on this. I just wonder from your and sit on our points of interest. What do you think that Fed put looks like? Back to hitting where it hit on the open. With a seven handle on CPI. It's probably going to have a much yep. lower strike price than it's had over the past several years. And I think they can look to a much more road, much more robust growth environment. Just spiking around now. Come on. You know, the last cycle was characterized by the terrible, felt like the terrible twos that ultimately became the terrific twos and created non-inflationary growth. Um, if you have brilliant, economy, brilliant, brilliant. Post, it's got another sixty dollars on Nas on the buy. Ultimately, that gives the Fed a little bit more wiggle room around sell-offs and are sell-offs at the market level or are they more vertical level? We've certainly seen a massive sell-off, say, in high-growth software. Uh, and that certainly is not changing any bits of the Fed's commentary. So I think, you know, the characterization of a sell-off before actually seeing it is hard to speak to. Yeah. But I do think that you're not going to have the rush to remain. Yeah, it was a good buy on uh, on US thirty. Perfect. Gives some more flexibility. Jack Caffrey, well put. So divided on that debate, though, right now for a lot of people I know, and that really shapes your view going out 12 months at the moment. About seven minutes into the session, equities up a third of 1%, the Nasdaq up eight tenths. Yesterday, snap at a five day losing streak. Kelly Lines, this market coming out of that inflation print, doing okay. Yeah, and continuing the rebound we saw taking shape yesterday, or really Monday when it comes to the NASDAQ 100, the big tech rebound in particular is what I want to focus on because we came in Monday off of the worst week for the NASDAQ 100, going all the way back to February of last year. The index fell as much as 2.7% before closing the day in positive territory, and those gains have continued in the next two sessions. Right now, we're up more than 5% from the lows of the week. And what has really seen uh, the rotation we had seen at the start of the year turning back the other way in, the, the, in that... When you look at this chart on GTV Go, we're looking nice at look perfectly again, spiking performance. up and down. It's really good. Heavy relative to the S&P 500 value index, basically expensive stocks versus cheaper ones. And what I like him to do this kind of movement. It's really good to scout, but see if we can get any more ranging between that points of interest and the, and the resistance zone, you see. Chance for a buy, chance for sells, possibly. We see some green, I'm going to get in and out. Move in the first trading week, uh, week of the year, the 10 year yield moving up 25 basis points over just a five day period. That has calmed down a lot. And of course, we're seeing yields coming in today off the back of that CPI print. So 1.72 or so percent on the 10 year and moderating from where we were at the, end the inflation, as we've seen. We traded it really well, traded it the reverse pre market, and we traded with it post market. And that's our strategy. That's how we continue to be profitable. And uh, we stick to the same routine every day with every news event that we think is worth trading. Win, lose or draw, that's how you go. You've got to stick with the system, stick with the same strategy. Don't change how you do things when it's a winning system, which I know this is. So. Consumers, for the most part, have spent down the... Tried, tested and tuned. So US 30, see, look now, pushing back. I'm not in on US 30. I'm just waiting on NAS, actually, because uh, NAS looks like it's going to push. On the story, here's Abby. An interesting point Alicia Levine is making on banks and lending. We'll get to that in a moment. But they do kick off. The earnings season for big banks kicks off on Friday with J.P. Morgan, so, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo. And push down. Well, perhaps on a Friday ahead of a long holiday weekend. Oh. Next Wednesday, we will have Golden Report. And then on Wednesday, excuse me, Thursday, Tuesday, Golden Reports. And on Wednesday, Bank of America and Morgan Stanley Report. Now, relative to net income, J.P. Morgan is expected to lead the pack nearly $9 billion in net income that represents 30 percent year over year growth Real, yeah got in and out there excellent got another 
uh, 34 and 25 so I've got another spat another $80 on the sell on NAS there Ooh. That may have to do with Jeffries. Jeffries reported today, sometimes seen as a two cells on NAS 100. Nice. Just that candle. Look, see, retesting the NY open zone. Just watching price action, as always. Up three and a half percent at the end of December, so that could help out those banks. On the other hand, John, of course, bringing in the wage uh, conversation, everybody will, wa will be watching wage inflation and expenses for these big banks. How much will they have to pay up to keep the big talent? Abby, thank you. A final word now on the earnings. Looking ahead with Emily Rowland, Jack Caffrey, and Vichy to the tour. Emily, first to you. A final word, please, on the earnings to come. Yeah, as I mentioned, Q4 earnings estimates up over 20% is what we have penciled in. That should be great. Actually, financials, though, the only sector expected to see up. slightly negative earnings growth in Q4. Um, certainly, we do agree with Alicia that loan growth should be supportive. Of nice sell on you on NAS. Look at that. Beautiful drop. That should help the sector as much as we do in areas like technology into next year. So we want to own those sectors that have great balance sheets. Good return on equity, ability to maintain margins, and ability broken that zone is going to be it's, it's on the neutral support. So I'm looking for buys again because I think it'll bounce off here and go back. It's broke that zone. The issue is that we're seeing really the end of the easy comps, the easy comparisons in the earning front. That was the drop for the NY Open. Businesses have more control over their destiny rather than less. Uh, and I think keep watching NAS is just doing a kind of an M pattern there. Uh, you're saying gold, so have a look at gold. Perfect. I think that actually is going to put a little bit more pressure on the idea of companies being able to grow. It was the open, as we said. That emphasis shifts back to our TP on the sell on open. Now, and I said it would be a sell and then a buy. And guess what? It is now it's on heavy resistance, so just be careful. Let it break this first. Then you can be in for more buys. My, my uh, equity strategy colleague, uh, Michael Wilson, on this, he expects to see uh, earnings growth to be pretty solid. The, the bigger challenge for the market is not in terms of the earnings growth, but in terms of the P multiples. Let's see so if it breaks it, we can get in and grab a bit. And about a much more challenge environment for PEs. P ratio is coming down, uh, and that that is the uh, rationale. Size so uh, 69. See if it gets up to 68, 67. Um, kind of zone. 4400 call. Uh, Morgan Stanley, Vichy, awesome as always. Great to catch up with you, sir. Vichy Tripatur, Jack Caffrey, Emily Rowland. Thank you to all three of you. Your equity market up to push up. on the S and P on the Nasdaq up six tenths of one percent. Crude doing nicely. WTI 82.30 coming up. Crude prices climbing to a two month high. Events outside of the core ranging around the look at gold. Look at it. This year is going to be hugely important. That conversation up next. This is Bloomberg. <laughs> going to be quick with the execution. We are on the master scalpers. wants to push you can see it does it's trying to break that zone trying to break it hey right. bullish for 15 seven seconds and we're still we're good bloomberg has enhanced search on the terminal I got a two lag i got took a loss of three dollars on the buy <laughs> Didn't close quick enough, so I'll go back in again if it breaks. It's going to break this zone. Compare financials. Find people. Analyze markets. You can enter phrases or ask questions. What do you want to know today? Yeah, it's just all about how quickly your broker executes your position. You've got to make sure there's enough in there. So it's going to push up again. Is it going to go back and retest? That's this zone here. Move the TP up so we can see what I'm talking about. I mean here. That's what we're looking for. 1824. Okay, 
saya kerjanya di sini udah lama, hmm. udah ada 10 tahunan di sini kerja. Masih sepi sih, nggak kayak dulu. Hmm. Kalau dulu kan rame. Sekarang ya. Size 69, stripping down. Nggak kayak dulu. Kalau dulu rame sekali. Hmm. Sekarang paling dapat jualan ya 100, 120 gitu. 100, 200 ya. Kalau dulu sih ya nyampe dah satu juta, satu setengah tuh nyampe dapat jualan. Let's go wait for it to break. Buy at the bottom. Price <laughs> size dipping down though, so just wait. Belum ada turis ke Bali. Masih ya domestic aja. While Bali has reopened its borders for foreign tourists since October, they're still not coming in. Many international airlines are yet to reinstate their direct flight to the island. Balinese people here really hope they can see more people from Australia, China, and Europe to come visit next year. Access the financial world on demand. Hear from leading economists, policymakers, and industry experts. Be alive and dropping again, America. dropping again, backing away from that resistance you see. Could have got a nice sell in there. Could have got a nice sell in there. I'm waiting for buyers, so I'm not doing anything, but. Visit Bloomberg.com webinars. And we're looking at Now it's dipping down, look. Bound's going to bounce off that neutral resistance. We still think uh, triple digit oil is within the works heading into the second quarter. Uh, we see demand recovering quite meaningfully. And one, one thing we've been noting for a while is that uh, OPEC supply, OPEC plus supply, is likely going to start leveling off in the next two months. Oil climbing to its highest level since November. With demand making a comeback, Amman's oil minister expecting OPEC supply hikes to remain conservative, saying the following. Demand is increasing and we want to make sure that the market is not overheating. We don't want to see $100 a barrel. The world is not ready for that. Joining us now is Bloomberg's Julian Lee. I don't think you can have a choice. For triple digit crude. I think it's going to happen. Uh, we are already seeing a much uh, tighter market than people were forecasting in the first quarter. The uh, US Energy Information Administration is now for the first time. Watching uh, NAS as well. Files globally uh, drawing in this quarter. Uh, everybody up until now is being forecasting that they would start to grow again. Even grab uh, 10 pips on it. Energy agency saying similar that the market is. Uh, oh, yeah, we've done it. Yeah, brilliant. Um, oh, look at that, that little spike. Just watching it live there. I got in. Got it. Brilliant. So we've got uh, 54 and 49. Uh, so another $125. And obviously. Get out of here. What you doing? Good. That was my little loss on gold as well, which was like four dollars. Satisfied with Brent eighty four, WTI at eighty two. Is that where they want things to be? I, th I think they're not unhappy with that level of prices. I mean, you know, if you talk to any of the ministers, so it bounced off the neutral support, so went in for the buy. Obviously, it might sink and break now, but I'll wait on that. And that was a good one. Nice little move. Nice little spike. Gold now. Let's see if we're going to get a buy on gold. See if it's going to push up. Retesting. Is it going to fill that wick? Our size bouncing off our average line, which we know happens. And then we'll look for another buy on NAS as well. I wonder if that's going to pull back from here. Thank you very much. This energy story, a big component in the conversation around inflation this morning. A seven handle. That seven handle, the headline inflation. Watch for that. Those of you who like to trade NAS. In the last month, you wonder how that develops. And just got to wait for the RSI to give you the trigger. Over in China, inflation actually calling. The team at China Renaissance saying the following. Gold ranging. In the first quarter. It's trying to break that 1823, 1824. Let's see. In 22. Damien Sasser of Bloomberg Intelligence. Not doing anything on US 30 at the moment. It's in a range. So trapped. The numbers we're seeing this morning at More interested in gold. Same, Jonathan. I mean, look, US CPI has historically tracked China PPI very, very strongly. China's inflation eases as commodities dip. Yeah, China news. We saw that earlier. Hey, look at that. Bad inflation. 
EPI, and that dropped the market. And then obviously DAX dropped as well, and we won on that. Didn't trade this loans thing. And obviously we took the buyers and the sells on the news here. So uh, next news is the old uh, crude oil. Yeah, crude. Mm-hmm. It shows the weakest rise since February of 2020 when basically China was shut off due to the Watching pandemic. Nas, like I say, here we go, pull back, which is what I wanted to see. Is gold going to follow suit? Seems to be waiting, waiting for the catalyst. Balance sheets down for 11 straight months. So basically, yeah, I mean, shadow financing, there's nowhere for mortgage lenders to go. And this is feeding into some of the downgrades we've seen from Moody's and Fitch across the property sector, issues like Shimao and Yuso. And the downgrade from Goldman on the general economy for GDP growth this year, that weakness concentrated in the first quarter. Damon, how do you think this data out overnight shapes the policy response still to come from oh, the good. Chinese Communist Party? I mean, it's going to be more easing. This feeds the fuel for more rate cuts ahead. I mean, we told you yesterday, 50 to 100 bips of triple R cuts is what we expect in uh, full year 2022. I think it's front loaded. I think we're going to see that sooner rather than later now. Damien, thank you, sir, as always, to get us up to speed on China and emerging markets as well more broadly. On the S&P 500, up a half of 1%, about 21 minutes into the session on the NASDAQ, up five or six tenths of 1%. Breaking it down, your sector price action, as always, is Kriti Gupta. Yeah, John, I'm trying to push. Seeing green on screen when it comes to the S&P 500. A lot of it thanks yeah. to having big tech on its side, finally actually driving the index higher. But on the sector basis, a little bit of a different story. Materials and industrials also towards... That's pushing up, gold, to trying to... You are seeing the big message of the day, though, is that it is risk on whether you look at the stock market or the commodities market. To the downside, though, help. Yeah, everything's so buying, basically. Those are your Go on, gold, get up there. Give us a cheeky little buy. This gap here it would be nice. The one that's weighing the index down, though, Biogen is going There's to be 50, and get five pips, 50 points. Limited Medicare coverage of its all and Nas doing the same. Go on, get back to this level here. Be great. Look at what it's doing. To the Nasdaq Break that 50. Index. Remember, biotech has been something that's really traded and taken the cue of big tech, but lately, in the last quarter, really, of 2021, actually impacted by Biogen's really controversial Alzheimer's treatment, simply uh, not getting approved in Europe or Japan, but getting the nod here in the United States, John. Pretty, thank you with the equity breakdown there for you. In the bond market right now, 10's unchanged, the 173 off the oh, highs. I did, I got $20 on gold there. <laughs> I did it, just it spiked up. I got £14.65 and one pound two trades but 15 that's 20 20 dollars there you go look that's what i wanted for i love these little buys so this is the little trades the little proper scalps just watching price action so another two buys on gold just have to wait touch the tp that'll do me you might go a bit more but if i do i can enter again this is the whole fun about this you can enter again you don't just have to hold take the money Take the money. More than three million users in over one hundred countries, and be empowered with Capital.com. There you go. Let's see. It's nice price action on gold. There, there it is. Beautiful. Hit again. Perfect scalping on that. Have a look on Nas. Yes, come on. See if we can grab something on Nas. It's going to retest this uh, zone here. Look, fifteen nine nine one. So it's got a long, we've still got a break yet, but still got a break at average line. So it's popped out the neutral zone. So wait for it to break here, and then you can take the buy. I had the divergence kick, you see, from here. Look, two lots, five candles, one, two, three, four, five, and there was your sell. Bang. Divergence was spot on, as it was here. As it was with the hidden bullish. I mean, it was all pretty much, yes. A good indicator, I'm not saying you enter as soon as you see it or you enter after five candles, that's just my methodology of how I work it out, but um, it just gives me a heads up that, that price could, you know, drop, go the opposite way or continue with the hidden. Um, struggling lot. Let's see if it can break that zone and set the TP back to there, look. 
And I was obviously looking to retest. Like I say it's all bullish tech sector at the moment. US 30 has hit the TP again, look from the open. It always likes to retest it once it's hit him, once you get used to spotting it. The bottom line is, is that Ed Hyman sees this economy growing four and a half percent nice. in 2022. Breaks this, we're in again. Translates to, into 11 Watch Nas, we'll see if it's going to... And that's the recipe for Ooh. higher stock prices, period. Fantastic to see a good friend of mine in this program, Julian Emanuel of BTIG. Now, Julian Emanuel of Evercore in a brand new seat, looking for 5,100 year-end on the S&P 500. On the S&P right now up a half of 1% at 47.38, a headline from the Saudi Wealth Fund just moments ago and on the Bloomberg Terminal, looking to invest $10 billion in stocks through the year ahead, through 2022. Nice, nice bullish candle on NAS. You see the NASDAQ doing nicely there, yields in on a 10 year. 10 years right now, 173 on twos, just a little bit higher, up a basis point. To just short of 90 basis points. Will these moves stick? It's like Dax is trying to hit that resistance zone again. You're still on Dax. <laughs> I'm still on Dax. You're probably the only American who trades Dax in the US session. You realize that? <laughs> I, know, I know that. But it's, it's easy picking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm, still, I'm, all on, the I'm on Nas. I want to try. Yeah, look at Nas. Look. Come on. Push up. New York, thank you. What a morning, All the volatility from the German Open has died down. Now you can smooth scalp it. Yeah. Scout, whatever works for you, that's what you got to do. That's it. The sessions can blend. I mean, Dax, like I say, is really good at following the US 30 at times, so it just tails off about 5 pm. But Naz is pushing up, pushing, pushing, pushing. Plus, on Dax, you don't have to have the account size that you do on US 30. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, US 30 is the highest account size you've got to have. You really want to have a two, three, four thousand dollar account to trade it as we trade it. Um, DAX, you know, you can start with a five hundred dollar account and you can start scalping it. And SP 500 as well, obviously, is another one. Now you need a little bit more as well. Um, but you're right. Yeah, US 30 has got the biggest one. Um, so yeah, but if you're gonna if you got if you got an account size of a thousand dollars or less, then you want to be doing that DAX and learn how to trade indices, scalp indices, practicing on DAX. SP five hundred is is good, but it doesn't it doesn't give an awful lot in terms of profit without holding. But it's good practice again for the trade in the US thirty because it moves in a similar manner. So um, yeah, it's all practice. But you're right, yeah, DAX is the one we all learnt with and we all started with. You know, that was the one. Down goes gold. Yeah. Even though we lose on gold, we like to keep trying. <laughs> yeah, we've done well on it. We've done well on it recently. Same as silver. Um, yep. We're going, look, if NAS breaks that average line, then it's a cheeky buy to the top of that minor resistance of 15.989. Let's see if it pushes up there. It wants to. Price action is telling us it wants to. It's rejected off our neutral support. We're 78% bullish, 81 now. We're already 48% of the daily volume, so there's lots to movement of movement to go as well. And the trend is bullish and rising. As you can see, there you go, look at that. Bullish and rising, pushing. I'm gonna break that zone. I want it to break that zone so we can go to the next level. Would be great. Pepsi's number fever campaign in the Philippines has probably gone down in history as one of the biggest marketing disasters in history, mainly because 
of a human error that led Pepsi to print more winning caps than they planned. Yeah. The resulting chaos caused riots, civil unrest, and even deaths. Yeah. Reporting this story took over a year and it resulted in me flying uh, to Manila in the Philippines to meet unlucky winners and to find out exactly what happened back then in the 1990s. My friends remember that. My name is Jeff Maish. I'm a journalist. Great story this is. Crazy. I wrote the story for Bloomberg Business Week about Pepsi's number fever campaign. The Philippines is a really interesting country. It's made up of thousands of islands. And it's also a country that's very heavily influenced by America. American culture is everywhere you look in the Philippines. They're obsessed with Frank Sinatra music, for example. They love all things America, and that extends to their, their love for soft drinks. Pepsi Cola, Coca Cola. In the 1990s, it was everywhere. <laughs> Pepsi and Coca Cola were embroiled in what is now known as the Cola Wars. It was a fierce battle for market dominance. Number Fever was already a really popular promotion. It had been rolled out in America to great success. And so Pepsi decided to roll it out internationally, particularly yeah. in Asia. They thought it was the answer to their problems. They thought it could finally help them beat their biggest competitor. A million pesos or $68,000 doesn't sound like a lot now, but in 1992, that was a phenomenal amount of money. You've got to remember that in the Philippines at the time, the average monthly income was about $100. So poor. a million pesos well, is wealth beyond anyone's wildest imaginations. Number Fever caught fire in the Philippines. Kids were saving up their pocket money to buy a bottle of Pepsi. Parents were squirreling away all of the bottle caps in bags. You would walk down the street and people were going through trash trying to find discarded bottle caps. It was a national phenomenon. Pepsi boasted that half the population of the Philippines was playing it. Number Fever boosted Pepsi sales every month from $10 million to $14 million. It had a huge impact on Pepsi's bottom line. Number Fever quickly became Number Hysteria. Maids were being jailed for stealing their employers' winning bottle caps. There was even some murders uh, over, over winning bottle caps. People were fighting in the streets uh, over these caps. There were signs that there were going to be problems with Number Fever very early. Pepsi had rolled out the competition in Chile and a garbled fax had caused some kind of problem with the winning number. They'd announced the wrong one in Chile, causing riots. There were signs that there could be big problems ahead if they didn't keep their eye on the ball. So in 1992, Pepsi decided to extend the campaign in the Philippines and they announced that the competition would go on for a few more weeks. One night, on the television news, they announced the latest winning number, 349. The problem was, 349 had already been allocated as a non-winning number in earlier campaigns. <laughs> so there were literally hundreds of thousands of bottle caps with 349 just floating around the Philippines. Hundreds of thousands of people all across the Philippines, thousands of islands, were finding winning bottle caps. 349, 349. Some people had 10 lucky 349 bottle caps. Good deal. People were dancing in the street, celebrating. They thought their problems were over. They were millionaires. It's still not certain exactly how many winners there were of lucky 349 bottle caps, but we know that Pepsi printed over 600,000 of them. Pepsi realized very early that there was a problem. Hundreds of people started arriving at their bottling plants with their lucky bottle caps. They realized something was seriously wrong. Pepsi tried to solve the problem 
by offering a small token donation to anyone that brought a lucky bottle cap to their bottling plant. But it wasn't enough. People didn't want just a handful of pesos. People wanted their million peso prize. Within a year, violent protests and riots outside Pepsi factories would leave dozens injured and five people dead. At one Pepsi factory in the Philippines, a grenade was thrown through the window. It killed three Pepsi employees. Anacita Rosario was a school teacher living near Manila in the Philippines. She was one of the tragic victims of this whole thing. She was walking to a nearby store to buy some rice one day when a Molotov cocktail was thrown at a Pepsi truck in a, in a violent protest. It bounced under the truck and exploded. It killed her and an innocent bystander who was just a child and injured many others. When I was in the Philippines, I tracked down Anacita's daughter, Cindy, and her husband, Raul. It was clear to me that they were still very upset by the whole thing. You know, a family had been ripped apart by this competition. And Raul told me that he'd never remarried. He'd uh, told me that he'd gone to meet Pepsi executives after his wife was killed. And he was angry. He, he said to them, you know, this wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for number fever. The biggest revelation from my reporting was rumors that Pepsi was somehow involved in bombing their own trucks. I found a newspaper report with a headline that said, Pepsi goons bomb their own trucks. <laughs> and when I visited the MBI, the police uh, department in, in the Philippines, they presented me with documents and interviews with people who claimed that Pepsi had paid them to cause riots and to cause trouble outside their plants in order to destabilize the situation and to frame the owners of the coalitions uh, that, were, that were fighting them to try and curry favor. I just thought that was, that was so shocking. And of course, Pepsi denied it, but how bizarre that a company would be accused of bombing their own trucks. The contest had sparked so much anger in the Philippines because it landed at just this really weird time in the Philippines' history. It was during a crazy election that was racked with allegations of fraud. The Philippines was in a kind of love-hate relationship with America. They loved, obviously, the American aid and finances that was pouring into the country, but at the same time, they yearned for independence. They wanted to be their own country. Vicente Del Fierro was a local preacher living in Manila, and he hated the Number Fever campaign. Del Fierro thought Pepsi's Number Fever campaign was just one of the many ways that America was asserting its dominance over a third world country. He hated seeing his fellow countrymen get ripped off in his eyes by this huge multinational American company. He wanted justice. Del Fierro rounded up over 800 winners of 349 bottle caps, and he got them all together to sue Pepsi for over $400 million to be divided between those holders of lucky bottle caps. Del Fierro took money from some of the people who could afford it. They paid him 500 pesos to help with legal fees, but for people who couldn't afford the, the money, he would just represent them Pro bono. The alliance per se is to build up pressure on Pepsi and so you see people uh, marching in the streets. Mm -hmm. So um, we have mounted our own uh, campaign even in the US. Even in the US. What, what is, what is the he flew to America and he hired two uh, consumer lawyers uh, here in America to take on Pepsi. He had a meeting at Pepsi's headquarters to try and resolve the problem, but he said he wanted to take it all the way to the highest courts in America. When those cases were... Yeah, just while I was watching that, we just hit TP on our NAS buy, so we just got another $60 on the NAS buy. Oof. 
Del Fiero continued his case there we go. in the Filipino court. There's the NAS buy. Thank One you, sir. I told you to retest that zone. Handed out for nine Pepsi Cola executives, which he saw as a big victory. We don't know if those arrest warrants were ever upheld, but it made newspaper headlines across the country. Pepsi did not take kindly to Del Fiero's campaign. They tried everything to shut him down. They sued him for libel. My father had to attend three times a month for a branch one for the Perfect. Just and to wait for that to hit. For the one so, uh, that's great. Also, um, there was a time uh, my father was hospital to do heart failure. As we've got the upcoming um, oil news. So uh, we've done about 30 odd trades since the announcement of the uh, CPI inflation news earlier on. And uh, like I say, yeah, we're, we're well over a thousand dollars for the day. So it's a great day scalping. So um, I'm going to trade the crude oil news in about 18 minutes time. We'll do that inside our trading group in in uh, Discord. They claimed that they didn't have access to anyone who was working at Pepsi that was around in those days. They also said that during COVID-19 they didn't have access to their documents about this. But you know they were very they were very careful to say that they were sorry for everything that happened. And we do know that Pepsi did try everything to try and make this right. The Pepsi number fever disaster cost the company millions. We know that they paid up to $10 million in those goodwill payments. But the financial effect could be much greater. After the disaster, we know that Pepsi sales dipped. They were overtaken by Coca-Cola again. Pepsi's number fever disaster changed the legacy of that soft drink in the Philippines forever. Some people of a certain age won't touch it. For many people, Pepsi is a taboo word. A lot of the people that I spoke to were still quite traumatized by their experience, by that experience of winning a million pesos, losing it, and then returning to their normal life in poverty mm. in Manila. Well, thank you everybody for joining me. As you can see, uh, gold retested the heavy resistance, which we, we said, uh, US 30 is in a range, and NAS just hit our TP and is broke. We're looking for more buys on NAS to our next level here. So uh, everything's gone. Like I said, I've done over 35 trades. Um, you know, we were over $1,000, so that's the end of the scalping. And uh, I hope you uh, watch this back and uh, hope you can join our VIP Discord group and learn how to get access to our Axe trading system and me to mentor you in how to trade fundamentals and bag those pips. Um, so thank you Justin for joining me in Mississippi. So we're going to trade privately the oil news now in the next 15 minutes or so. But uh, thank you again for joining me. Like I say, go to the website www.mohawkforex.com if you want to have information on how to join myself and the team and learn how to true scalp, which is something we will teach you. So until the next live stream, uh, which will probably be tomorrow, tomorrow night, uh, take care, trade safe all, and thank you for a great inflation news trading session. And see you on the next stream. Take care all.